G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here once again. I'm just going to bring you another tutorial this time about tabs. Okay, tabs are extremely important and I'm not specifically talking about the tab key on your keyboard, but he has a big, big part to play in this thing right here. He is the tab key. Tabs, however, sit up here on your ruler. Now, most of you won't have that ruler there because by default it is hidden. So I've actually enabled mine a long time ago and that setting is just carried across through numerous versions of Microsoft Office. If I go to view up the top, we can actually turn the ruler on and off just by clicking that. All right, I suggest work at all times with the ruler on because it gives you a lot more control, lets you look at where things are on the page and it lets you see measurements. Now by default, it is in centimeters. So this is a zero centimeter, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth, okay? On this side, you'll notice it goes gray and then it goes one, two backwards. That's because that is the, um, the border, the margin on your page, sorry. Okay, same thing with the top, the right, and the bottom. Okay, because it was 2.54 centimeters for the margin of the top, left, right, and bottom of the page. So that's all that is indicating with the grayed out area. Okay, this top little guy up here, he is your first line indent. Okay. He is very, very interesting. He basically allows you to push where your text starts. So, I'm gonna quickly jump to my other document and let's change this first line indent. It allows you to put a little gap between the first line and it doesn't affect the rest of your lines on your paragraph. This whole thing here is the entire indent and you can actually be a bit of a tricky bugger here and you can Squish in text, just like so, and then you can italicize it, make it look like a comment. Let's go right alignment. Uh, Mr. Dingle, 2015. Because I'm a knob. Put quotes around it. Makes me look like an idiot. Anyway, that's just something quickly there. It's not actually to do with tabs, but it's so close that I thought I'd explain these guys here. So that's your first line indent. That is your whole line indent and that's the other side indent just there anyway quick note for you so let's go back to tabs and i'm going to teach you all about it what i've got here is i've set up basically a table i've got headings item cost count and total and then i've got one two three four items in which i'm buying okay now as you can see they're all sort of jumbled up the numbers are really hard to read it's really difficult i suppose to decipher which one is which for that matter so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize what's called tabs. And tabs are these little icons in the top left hand of your rulers, just here. And if you click on it, just single click, it scrolls through the different types of tabs that you can use. Default tab is this left hand tab just here. Okay, the left tab will push it, well, it's basically like aligning text. You've got your left tab, your center tab, your right tab, your decimal tab, uh, I think it's your vertical tab, for bar tab, sorry, and you've got your hanging, again, so your line indent, and then your normal. So, what I'm basically going to demonstrate is these four, so the left, the center, the right, and the decimal. I'm not going to worry about these other guys, because they're pretty advanced guys. Whoop, go back, I've gone too far, there we go. So what we need to do is we need to organize these guys into a bit of a... Well, a bit of a better pattern. So the first thing I could do, though ignoring tabs altogether, I could mash the space bar a ton of times. Keep mashing. Keep mashing. And that's pretty damn tedious because then I'd have to do it for every single line, wouldn't I? All right. So that said, I don't like that. That's a terrible way of doing things. In fact, you should try and avoid that at every single cost. If you see anybody spacing across the page or entering down the page, shoot them because they're doing things very, very wrong and they need to relearn what they're doing. So what I will use is we're going to start using the tab key right now. We're going to forget about the tabs again and we're going to look at the tab key on the keyboard. Now, let's go on an empty line. If I press the tab key, you'll see it jumps a fair gap. And if I move the cursor, you can see those gaps are still there. Those are tabs. And by default, tabs have a set size, which I think is roughly just over a centimetre. I think it's about 1.2 centimetres from default. I can't, don't quote me on that because I can't remember. 
but what we can actually do is change the size of those tabs by using these icons. Mm. Now, let's quickly think about how we want to align these things. The item heading is going to go above Bunny Cage Food and Shotgun. So we're going to leave him exactly where he is on the left. And same with these guys down the page. Cost, we want to have, let's say, about three and a half centimeters across the page. And we want to align them by their decimal point. We want all of those decimal points to be in the exact same place. So what we're going to do is use a decimal tab for him. The count, I would like to center align him, let's say about seven, yeah, three and a half and seven centimeters across the page. And we're going to center tab him. So all the numbers sit together down the page. And then ten and a half, we'll put another decimal place for these guys. All right. What we might do is actually add another column. I'm sorry. Let's put a comment column. Um, fluffy. And we're going to right align these guys. Made of metal. That. Yummy. Shotgun. Not so yummy. All right. So with the comment, we are going to right align him. So the last guy was ten and a half. So we go half, one, two, three, right at the back of the page. That's perfect. Four columns. So leave item where he is, and we're going to move cost across. So again, we can tab him, but I only want to put in one tab. I don't want to put heaps and heaps of tabs in. So what we do there is you click on this until you get the desired tab that you want to use. Secondly, don't do anything just yet. Highlight all your lines first that you want to, um, I suppose, organize. So all those five lines, I want to organize in a certain way. So I'm going to highlight all five lines. So I wanted it at three and a half centimeters. All you do is you move your cursor onto your ruler and left click. So you can see it's made that little tab icon. It's there, it's good to go. And the reason I highlighted all those lines is because it'll create the tab on each line at the top. If I click on the next line, you'll see the tab is not there but it still exists on these five. So how the hell do we use this guy? Well, put your cursor next to cost, press tab. And it's good to go. Okay, tab, 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 tab. And you can see that it's aligned them right down the dot. Now because cost doesn't have a dot in him, he looks a bit dodgy. So let's put a couple of zeros in there. Yeah, look at that. Just telling people that we need to use. Yeah, look at that. Tricky. Okay, so it's aligned by the dot. If you were to actually draw a line, it would hit every single one of these dots. Okay, let's do the same thing with the next line. So count was going to be a center aligned. So highlight these five lines. Go find your center alignment. Put it on seven. Click next to count and tab, next to five, tab, next to one, tab, tab, tab. Whoa, what's going on here? So it might look really ugly, but if you look really closely, what it has done is it's actually spaced out all these things right down the center. Okay. Let's do the rest of our tabs, and that's going to look a lot better in a moment. So let's highlight these lines, and let's do the rest of the tabs straight off the bat. Fix up total first. Let's go dollar sign, hash dot, hash hash. Okay, highlight your lines. Let's put in our next decimal tab at ten and a half. And then let's put our right hand tab. There we go. At one, one, two, three, fourteen. Okay. Cursor next to total. Tab. Tab. And you can see these numbers are starting to fix themselves up. Comment. Tab, 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 tab. There you go. I might actually move this tab. And the way you can move tabs is really, really simple. Highlight the lines. And then just click and drag. And you can see the update straight away. Straight away. And that's using tabs. You can see with just one tab and one space, 
it's actually align these really nicely. And the great thing about using tabs in this way is you can actually, as I've just shown you before, you can grab them and move them. So if you don't like the spacing, if it's not, if it's spaced too much or not spaced enough, whoops, let's get rid of that. Okay, you can fix it up. Now you just saw I create, made an error and I got rid of the tab. So I accidentally left click somewhere, added a new tab and it really stuffed up everything. So what you do to get rid of a tab is click and drag it down. And you can see it just went gray there and that means it's going to get rid of it and that's it that's all your tabs i'm going to highlight this line i'm going to go bold and that's how you do tabbing now one last thing before i let you go is a lot of the time you see this in documents signed and then they go underscores lots of underscores that's actually the worst way you can do things when it comes to things like this what i'm actually going to do is I'm going to use tab to do that for me. This is what's so great about tabs. Let's say I need someone to sign the bottom of the page and they need to date it down here. Sign dated. All right. Well, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight these two lines. Let's just select the left hand tab. For some reason, it doesn't change sometimes. It's really weird. I'm going to put the tab roughly where I want the lines to finish. So let's say, for instance, I want the line to finish about there. So you click, you've added in a tab. And what you do now is just click down here. Let's press tab once, and you can see how I've just added that big space in. And then what we do is you add what's called a leader. So highlight those lines again. Sorry about this. And I want you to double click on that tab. And this brings up the tabs dialog. Okay, you can get to it otherwise, but this is probably the quickest one. Down the leader. You've got none. I can set dots, dashes, or underscores. If I click OK for underscores, automatically generates that entire line for me. Absolutely nothing. I did nothing there. So I could actually try dashes, double click. I could try dots, or I could go back to none. Okay. But let's just leave it as underscores because that's very very traditional so that's tabs everybody try them out with different things you'll notice that tabs become extremely powerful and helpful later on when you're using documents more and more for the moment like comment subscribe down the bottom for me please everybody helps me out a whole lot and i'm going to catch you in the next video hopefully see you then